Previously, Aiko, Ayoi, and Keitaro went to the famous phone booth known for having the ghost of a hostess. At the booth, Ayoi sends Keitaro inside and waits outside, but the hostess begins strangling his neck. Then Ayoi jumps into the booth with her weapons and frees Keitaro. Afterward, she crashes down the booth and cuts the phone line, silencing the hostess. They all sit in the car to return home, but Keitaro doesn't understand why he is getting chills. It is because Ayoi has brought the broken phone headpiece with her, where the hostess's ghost is still shouting, and Ayoi is strangling her. Now, the dolls in Ayoi's room are pulling the ghost of the hostess from the telephone. And due to the pain, the ghost in the telephone is shrieking loudly. Keitaro goes to Aiko's house. On the way, he gets lost in his own thoughts and thinks about the past. He believes he does not like any ghost-related items due to a spiritual incident in his past when his friend was injured. For a long time, Keitaro kept himself away from people and locked himself in a room. This was solely the result of that spiritual incident. But now, he is back to his normal life and is trying to keep himself busy. He has found a part-time job as a home tutor to engage his mind in normal activities. When he reaches Aiko's house, Ayoi opens the door and welcomes him. He gets scared when he sees the doll in her hand and thinks he is trapped wrongly. Ayoi is gathering dark energy to fight the same entity that took her mother away. The scene shifts to Keitaro entering the house and starting to teach Ayoi. After finishing the lesson, Aiko serves them hot cocoa. They are delighted to see it and thank Aiko. After having the hot cocoa, Ayoi asks Keitaro to go to a haunted spot. He becomes very nervous upon hearing this because he dislikes haunted places. He becomes so confused that hot cocoa spills from his mouth. He then tries to dissuade them and make excuses. Seeing his facial expressions, Aiko and Ayoi understand that he is timid and afraid of going there. Aiko and Ayoi start laughing at his condition. However, Keitaro does not like it at all and regains control, telling them that he has an exorcism. Ayoi gets surprised and listens to him with great interest. After some time, they all leave the house and get ready to go. While sitting in the car, Keitaro remembers how Aiko and Ayoi convinced him to go with them. He also thinks about Aiko's behavior, wondering why she always takes Ayoi's side and suspects that something might be wrong with Aiko. Just then, Ayoi asks Keitaro about exorcism. In response, Keitaro holds hand in which he is wearing gloves and tells her that he had an incident in the past, due to which it has to be treated or exorcised repeatedly. On the way, Aiko tells Ayoi that Keitaro's grandmother is the priestess of the shrine they are heading to. They stop at a service area for a meal and reach their destination after some time. There are many dolls at this place and they are all happy to have arrived there. Ayoi looks around with great interest. Keitaro's grandmother arrives and becomes very angry with Ayoi. She throws water on Keitaro in anger and questions why he brought Ayoi there, as she is a very dangerous girl who has broken five statues of Buddha so far. To which Ayoi says seven statues, not five. Hearing this, grandmother gets more angry. Keitaro understands her anger because he knows that his grandmother is more sensitive to spirits than he is. Grandmother tells Ayoi to leave from there and runs to hit her. Aiko and Keitaro are watching all of this. Keitaro steps forward and stops his grandmother. Grandmother angrily tells him not to interfere. Then, Keitaro explains that Ayoi is his student and he has a responsibility towards her. He needs to continue his job because he wants to improve his social skills. Hearing this, grandmother gets calm and leaves Ayoi with warning. After that, Grandma says to Keitaro to come with her because it's time for exercising the exorcism. After Grandma leaves, Keitaro asks Ayoi about the broken Buddha statues. Ayoi replies to him that all those statues contain the evil Atma and that maybe one of them killed her mother. Hearing this, Keitaro recalls the words of Aiko, who explained to him about his parents' deaths. Some time later, an anesthesiologist and Keitaro's grandma work on exercising his hand. Grandma is very worried about him. During this, Grandma asks Keitaro about his meditation, exercise, and diet. He replies that he is very careful about all of it. Grandma explains to him that if he keeps his mind fresh through meditation, he will be able to recognize dangerous places. Keitaro thinks that he will never be able to live a normal life again if his grandma doesn't help him. His grandma is helping him a lot in his recovery. After that, grandma takes out a sword. On the other hand, Ayoi is trying to peek into the room from the outside, but Aiko stops her by saying that she will show her something interesting. Hearing this, Ayoi stops looking inside and comes back to Aiko to see the interesting picture of Keitaro's hand. Aiko shows her a picture of Keitaro's hand. There are a lot of white veins on Keitaro's gloved hand. Aiko tells her that when these veins get bigger, it hurts a lot. That's why Keitaro has to come here again and again. Just then, Grandma cuts these veins while reading ritual prayers with a sacred sword. 
After seeing a picture of Keitaro's hand, Ayoi says that something is wrong here. After the exercise, Keitaro and Grandma are sitting together and both are very tired. Meanwhile, Ayoi and Aiko come there with snacks. Ayoi offers snacks to Keitaro. She is surprised to see his hand and praises Grandmother for her work. Seeing them tired, Ayoi asks them to take a rest. Only then, Keitaro goes to the toilet and leaves. Ayoi is suspicious of his going that way. Suddenly, she sees Keitaro's veins and asks Grandma if she can have some of them. Grandma frowns at her and says if she likes ghostly things. Ayoi replies just as much as she likes curry. Grandma then tells a story to Ayoi and Aiko that this shrine offers memorial services for dolls. People come there to give their ghost dolls. The most dangerous dolls are in the basement of the house and nobody is allowed to go there. Ayoi is very surprised to hear all this. On the other side, Keitaro finds a doll in his way. As soon as Keitaro picks up this doll, something suddenly happens to him, and he thinks that the doll was accidentally left there by her grandmother, and he should put this doll back in the basement. He walks towards the basement. He remembers that his grandma forbade him to go there, but he ignores it. On the other hand, grandma explains that whoever goes into the basement, the dolls placed there are inserted into that person's body. Ayoi listens to all this with great interest and not fear. Grandma is also surprised by her reaction. Suddenly, she sees Keitaro is holding a doll with long hair and red dress. Then, Ayoi asks grandma about the appearance of dolls. Grandma tells her that these are Japanese dolls with long hair, and the most dangerous doll is wearing a red flower patterned kimono. Hearing this, Ayoi gets shocked and says that she has to go to the basement hurriedly. At this, Grandma gets angry and starts scolding her. Then Ayoi replies that the doll has taken Keitaro under its control. Ayoi further says to Grandma to stay here because she is tired due to which her powers are drained. She picks up the sword and goes to the basement alone. Grandma does not believe her. Keitaro is sitting in the basement with a doll. There are many dolls in his surroundings, and all these have shiny red eyes. Keitaro thinks what he is doing here. Suddenly, the hairs of the doll he has starts entering into his mouth, due to which he cannot breathe. Hairs are going into his mouth fastly, and he gets faint slowly. He tries to pull the hair out of the mouth but can't do anything. Then he remembers that his grandma forbade him to go there. Keitaro slowly begins to lose consciousness, but just then, Ayoi is there and cuts the doll's hair with the sacred sword. She asks the doll who gave it permission to take people into control. After that, she cuts the doll's head and kills it. Then she warns all the other dolls that if they try to possess any human, then she will cut off everyone's head. After that, every doll is afraid of Ayoi and their shining eyes are now closed. Meanwhile, Aiko and Grandma come there. Ayoi removes the hair from Keitaro's mouth and saves him. Upon this, Keitaro realizes that he was stuck here due to his own fault this time, yet Ayoi saved him without thinking about her own life. Then, everyone starts going back home. Keitaro's grandma asks everyone to go home safely. Keitaro says to his grandma that he couldn't have told her this earlier but Ayoi is a nice girl, and he wants to take care of her because she is his first student. After hearing this, grandma gets shocked and says that the Buddha's statues that she has broken will disturb her. To avoid it, Ayoi must take an ornament and offer a prayer. Grandma then says to Keitaro that he can sense ghosts, and it is not a bad thing. Even by using it, he can save his family and friends. Then they leave for home. On the way, Keitaro buys small statues of Buddhas, which Ayoi is happy to see, and she tells him that in return she will show him a collection of dolls in her room. They all reach home safely. Ayoi takes Keitaro to her room and shows him all the dolls and tells that these are all ghost dolls. She also places the doll there which controlled Keitaro. Keitaro is very scared to see this. Just then, Aiko comes there and tells him that everything is normal. Keitaro thinks that she is unable to see ghosts, that's why she is saying this. Meanwhile, Aoi comes there and asks Keitaro for his nails because she wants to save him. And that's the end of the second episode of Dark Gathering. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.